Welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are continuing with the series Numerical Methods for Engineers and this is the 8th lecture of the series. In this lecture we are going to cover Newton's method to find out root of a quadratic equation. So before going to the main details, here is something about myself and I request you to subscribe to my channel for more updates on console multiphysics, on engineering mathematics and other related courses. So here is the scheme to find out a root from Newton's method. For this, I have taken a Cartesian coordinate system. Say so this is the y axis and this is the x axis. And this blue line represents a particular function, say fx. And on that, on a particular point that is situated on this fx line, we have taken a tangent and that is represented by this line. This is the black line. And what I have done, I have taken the same, the same Cartesian coordinate system here and only showing the black line that is a tangent line. So we have just shifted this coordinate system here and showing you the black line. And the slope of the black line is given by M. Then M can be calculated from this methodology. This is the point which is situated on this fx. And we have shifted this point here. So this point say it is situated at a particular location x1 on the x-axis and hence the value of the function here is fx1 and other arbitrary point we have taken on this line that is a tangent line and say this is a point x and y so this is the x and this is the y value it should be remembered that this point is not located on fx this point is located on this tangent line and thereby we calculated the slope of the tangent line or you can say the slope of the fx on a particular point that is here. But as this is a nonlinear equation, the slope at every point is changing. So it should be remembered that the slope of this tangent line will be equal to the slope of this function fx only at a point and that point is uh, situated here. So m is represented by fx1 minus y by x1 minus x. So we have written it here. Now just by cross multiplication you can see I have written the equation again. Now this m is nothing but f dash x1 if the point is situated on the curve. So we can replace this m by f dash x1 okay, given a condition the point is situated on the curve and hence we can reduce the equation in this form. Now uh, we have taken uh, one assumption what if this particular point lies here. Here means on the x-axis that means the root of the curve. So we have assumed that the point is lying here and hence at that, as, uh, at that condition if the assumption is valid then y would be 0 at this particular point and that is what we have taken here so y has been put 0 and thereby we calculated the value of x and this is coming x1 minus fx1 by f dash x1 so now what we will be doing given a condition that it lies on the x axis this particular point then x can be calculated by this equation but for every guess this assumption will not be true and that is why what we have to do we have to take assumptions you can take any assumption say x0 and you can find out the value of the function at x0 and you can also find out the value of the first derivative at x0 and thereby you can get a new value x1 so the thing is I assume a value x0 so this is the starting assumption value I calculate those things fx0 and fx0 I end up with calculating x1 then this x1 I use as my second assumption and thereby I calculate x2 by this formula x1 minus fx1 by f dash x1 I keep continuing this like x3 will be calculated from the formula x2 minus fx2 by f dash x2 and hence you can uh, you can proceed forward and for each step we have to do one thing we have to check x1 minus x0 rather we have to check absolute value of the difference when the 
iteration will be going on this difference will be diminishing if you have taken a particular a uh, right guess and then you will be reaching towards this point thereby you will be reaching towards this point that means you will be reaching towards the root and we will be continuing this thing up to n times unless this xn minus xn minus 1 becomes a significantly less value that will be predefined in our code. I have already written a code for this though you can see here those are the header files which will be required for calculating this particular thing and I have assumed a value a, a epsilon here that is 1 into 10 to the power minus 10 and that is that would be the difference. I have told you that we have to check for this difference, absolute value of this difference and we want when the absolute value of this difference becomes less than 1 into 10 to the power minus 10 then the simulation stops. That means we get apparently right value because you can see 10 digits after a point that becomes significantly less error and that error can be taken for granted for any practical purposes and numerical simulations, numerical calculations are done for practical purposes only. Here to write this code we have segmented the code into three functions for doing a certain job. We have called those functions if required in the main code. So this is the main code and those are the supporting code. In this supporting code we have written few functions. So this is the first function double f double x. Here we are defining the equation. For say in this case we are defining x square minus 2. This is my equation. I have to find the root of this equation. And hence what I have done. Uh, I, have, uh, I have directly written the equation here. Next, what we have to do, we need to find out the first derivative of the equation as I have shown in the last slide and that is why we are calculating the fx and directly putting it here. You can see x square, the first derivative would be 2x, hence I have given this 2x by another function which is the function fp, double fp. Another function is written for calculating the iteration. So, this is the function where we are uh, we are defining x minus fx by fpx fx is your this one that is the main function and fpx is nothing but the first derivative of that particular function so we are defining if i show you basically we are defining this thing now in the main code uh, we have defined the variables whatever we will be using for this particular code we have again defined int i this will be required for running the loop you can see here i have run one loop i equal to 0 i less than 100 i plus plus so how the 100 times iterations we will be doing if uh, and for a real uh, for a good guess 100 times iterations is considered to be a very good uh, good number here what i have taken I have taken a, um, a loop that is do printf enter initial guess. So you have to, it will prompt the user for the initial guess. You have to enter the initial guess. It will be scanf, that means it will be taken inside the memory. That's why we have put one scanf. This is basically a do while loop. So uh, uh, while fx1 equal to equal to 0, that means if the fx1 whatever value you x1 you are putting and for that if f p x1 becomes 0 then it will be becoming by 0 so it will give you an infinite number so that cannot happen again i am telling if the condition you 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 have assumed such a number for which this 2x is becoming 0 then it will be coming here so something by 0 it will be uh, giving you an infinite number so the code will stack it will not run so we have taken into consideration of this particular fact and hence we have run one do while loop for checking this fact if this does not create any problem the code will go to the next step that is the to the for loop and in the for loop we have iterating for we have be, we have iterated for 100 times actually 99 times because less than 100 it will run from uh, oh, again it is 0 to 99 that means 100 numbers then it is going to this execution step in this execution step what we are doing we are calling this function you see here 
this is a newton double x so it is calculating this and it is giving you the value and it is calculating for initially i equal to 0 so it is calculating for i equal to 0 then uh, it is giving you uh, this particular value of x2 it is checking whether f a b s that means absolute value of x1 minus x2 is less than equal to a p s or not if this condition satisfies we are writing break that means stop here otherwise it uh, it will be updated with the value x x1 equal to x2 so what, what does it mean i have shown here initially we started with x0 then we updated the value as x1 and we calculated x2 so this step does the same thing if this condition does not satisfy it updates the value x1 equal to x2 again do the iteration and it will be doing 100 times if not this condition is reached but in general it will be reached within uh, below 100 iteration and uh, after we reach this thing we will be printing the value and that will be the root of the equation so this is the simple code i will show you the code here i have already written it the same code so i'll directly go to execution step so i click on compile run so you can see it is asking for the guess value another thing i will tell you a simple thing so we are doing this equation so the value would be plus minus 1.414 so i go here i put initial we know that the value will be either plus 1.414 or minus 1.414 so i enter one you can see it is giving me the value 1.414 so that is a root and you see here after fourth iteration the value is reached and we for safety we have taken 100 iterations so it is very good number again we run the code now i put a guess value minus one you can see it is giving you the value minus 1.414 so when i was putting the value one it was reaching towards the nearer root that was plus 1.414 when i have put minus 1 it is going to the other direction that is minus 1.414 so it can able to find out both the roots but it depends on your initial guess whatever initial guess you give it will be going nearer to that so that is the thing about newton's method so i guess you can you can understand the code and you can write this code and that will be helpful for your course and I again request you to subscribe to my channel for more updates. Thank you very much.